Shady's Grave. Written by Ragnar Martinson. Narrated by Stefan Strasser. As we entered the antechamber of the Goblin King, I had the feeling I'd been there before. But before I could even take in the gilded decoration and massive stone doors, the guards had already spotted us. I and the elf shot down three of them in rapid succession, the force of the arrows knocking the little bastards back into the ranks of their friends. They were small and agile, hollering in their blood-curdling goblin language. I whirled around in a hunch and raised my claymore sword, cutting one down, kicking another one square in the face. Their armor was a joke compared to my high top boots and the glinting steel of my two-hander cut through their leather garb like a razor blade. One goblin flew past me, propelled by a mighty punch from Uragog, the orc warrior who was picking off the enemies trying to hack through her shin protection. Jaritus should have finished the spell by now. As I looked around the room for him, I spotted the mage standing on a rickety little table with a rapidly glowing orb between his hands. He threw it a few feet into the air and it detonated outwards with a bluish shockwave that ripped through the goblin guards, scattering them around the room. Any second now the huge stone doors would open and... How did I know this? How did I anticipate the goblins behind me? My thoughts were interrupted by the opening of the stone doors and the entrance of the goblin king Shady, flanked by two generals with shields. While his minions were all half my size, the Goblin King towered over us and was almost as wide as he was tall. For some reason, his weapons were a knife and a fork, and judging by the pieces of meat hanging off them, they had recently been used as eating utensils. The stench that came from him was eye-watering, and Ion almost doubled over, her elf nose much more sensitive to smells than mine. Jaritus, protective spell, now! I yelled, startling the mage out of his stupor. He began moving his hands and mumbling incantations. A gossamer sheet unfolded from his hands, then grew in size until it hung like a shimmering veil between us and the Goblin King. The elf started to needle the two smaller goblins with arrows, which gave Uragog the signal to start fighting. Wiping sweat from my forehead, I raised my sword and stormed after her. While I was running, I heard the sound of more goblins yelling coming from Shady's chamber, and saw the little green creatures flooding through the doors. Attack the biggest ones first, I shouted pushing my sword into the chest of a wheezing goblin, crushing another one's skull under my metal gauntlet, comically splattering green blood on the floor. The elf had apparently gotten my signal and had switched to flaming arrows, but most of them landed in the general's shields and did little damage. This seemed to annoy them, so they turned towards Aeon, yelling with rasping voices. I took the chance and circled around them, kicking little goblins out of the way until I was close enough to jump on the back of the left general, sinking the blade into his neck. His companion swirled towards me, his axe raised. My blade caught on the armor while I was trying to pull it from the dying goblin, and all I could do was try to raise my arm to ward off the big axe looming over me. But I was safe by my group. The elf shot an arrow that hit the goblin's clawed hand, and Uragog came running with surprising speed to sweep the enemy off his feet, hurling him to just inches of the mage who quickly cast a fireball to melt the goblin's head. Before we had the chance to feel triumphant, we were startled by Anne's yell, who was slowly being crushed by Shady, who was holding her like a roasted chicken wing. The orc grabbed the nearby table and threw it across the room. It shattered on the Goblin King's hide, enough to stop him from squeezing the life out of the elf. He dropped her to the floor, grunting and attacking us right away, much more nimbly than I expected. An ice spell from the mage missed him by inches, so the huge Goblin King rammed into Uragog with a crash that made the floor tremble. The two giants wrestled on the ground and I could barely get close enough to hit the king without hitting Uragog. For a moment, the goblin got the upper hand and landed a massive blow that knocked out the orc, something I had never seen before. Or had I? Almost at the same instant, Shady lunged to grab a Jaritus, who had been trying to cast another protective spell. But the mage didn't dodge fast enough and his cloth armor couldn't protect him from a meaty fist that punched him and sent him flying into a pile of dead goblin guards. I tried to overcome a surprise that Shady had defeated half of the party and swung the claymore into his leg. Instead of pain, it only seemed to induce anger in the Goblin King. With my sword still stuck in his calf, he whipped around, hitting me with the broadside of his fork. Immediately, I could feel at least two ribs breaking and the world dimmed, then my brain fogged over. The next thing I knew, Shady was holding me close to his ugly goblin face his tiny black eyes glowing with the excitement of choking me to death. It looked like he might succeed too, between the injury, the pressure on my body and the incredible stench coming from his jaws. 
I blacked out, succumbing to a darkness rising in my throat like bile. The party has four members. The elf Ian, the orc barbarian Uragog, the mage Geratus and me, the night wolfgar. We stand in front of the town's notice board and I grab a paper off of it. Who will kill Shady the Goblin King? Reward? 900 gold pieces, fame and fortune and all the gold that the Goblin King has in his halls. Sounds like an adventure to you? I ask the group. The mage nods and Aeon seems excited. Even the orc grunts with something that could be interpreted as happiness. Then it's settled. We'll kill Shady. Dig him a proper grave. As we enter the antechamber of the Goblin King Shady, I have the sense that I know all this. The goblin guards are starting to charge at us and Ian kills three of them with her arrows. I turn around, spearing one coming at me from behind and kicking the other with my boot. Uragog punching the goblin across the room. Jared is casting a spell. The door is opening and Shady enters. The mage casting a protection wall. Charging at the king. The flood of little goblins. Killing the two generals. Ian being crushed. The fight with Uragog. The defeat of the mage, the defeat of the warrior, as the Goblin King strangles me. The party has four members. The elf Ian, the orc barbarian Uragog, the mage Geratus, and me, the knight Wolfgar. We are standing in front of the town's mayor. The Goblin King Shady has terrorized this humble hamlet for years. We are looking for adventurers to kill him, he says. The reward will be 900 gold pieces and the endless gratitude of the villagers. As we enter the antechamber of the Goblin King Shady, it feels like this has happened before. The fight, the defeat, the darkness rushing at me. The party has four members. The Elf Iron, the Orc Barbarian Uragog, the Mage Geratus and me, the Knight Wolfgar. We sit in a tavern, talking to a count. My castle has been attacked by goblins lately and I want you to kill the Goblin King Shady. The reward is 900 gold pieces, I say not knowing why. He's as surprised as I am. Yes, uh, that's correct, and all the loot you can find in his dungeon as well. As we enter the antechamber of the Goblin King, all of this is familiar. There will be a fight, there will be death. Already I can smell its foul breath. Already I know, but how? When have I seen this? The party has four members. A beeping wakes Ben from his nap. He drops his tablet computer on the floor and tries to identify the source of the noise. It's port 14. The vital signs are critical. Red numbers flash on the screen. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He tries to remember what to do. Stop the system running on port 14, but you can't just jerk the customer out. It could result in brain damage. Something about PTSD. If only he had listened to the rest of the lecture as well. Call an ambulance? He fumbles with the phone. While it is ringing, he mutes the alarm, even though the signs are still critical. What happened here? The customer has been in the pot for almost, oh shit, 20 hours? How did he not notice it? Why didn't the system tell him earlier? Maximum pot time was 10 hours. The poor guy must be fried already. No game lasted that long. Even if they just walked along in the adventure, they'd be done in 4-5 to five hours. What was he playing? Ah, the classic Shady's Grave. Must be a bug in the pod software, Ben thought. 911, what's your emergency? Instead of any pain, it only seemed to induce anger in the Goblin King. With my sword still stuck in his calf, he whipped around, hitting me with the broadside of his fork. Immediately, I could feel at least two ribs breaking and the world dimmed. Then my brain fogged over, and the next thing I knew, Shady was holding me close to his ugly goblin face, his tiny black eyes glowing with the excitement of strangling me to death. He might succeed too. Between the injury, the pressure on my body, and the incredible stench coming from his jaws, I blacked out, succumbing to a darkness, rising in my throat like bile. I hear Death screaming my name, but Death's scream sounds like that of an elf, and I force my eyes open to see Ian, whom I thought long gone, burying a huge axe in the skull of Shady, the Goblin King. The pressure eases and I drop to the floor, just as the body of the Goblin collapses next to me. I want to thank Aeon and look at her. She's glowing with pride and suddenly she's literally glowing, getting brighter, getting whiter, shining over everything like light itself. A voice calls in the whiteness. 
Congratulations on defeating Shady and thank you for playing Shady's Grave, a Featherlight Systems production.